because my vision was so bad, you know, and my head hurt all the time and life sucked and it was just um, like, it just seemed like there was very little hope and I didn't really know um, kind of what to do because all the optometrists and ophthalmologists that I was seeing were just telling me like, this is, these are the, like, this is kind of the hand you were dealt and you got to find a way to cope with it. My name is Ray. Um, I started at a negative 9.75 in my left eye and a negative 9.800 diopters in my right eye. Um, that was my contacts prescription. And I had over a diopter and a half of um, astigmatism prescribed to me in my glasses. That was about a year ago. Um, and I was having really bad headaches. I was um, working on a trading floor, staring at a bunch of screens for a lot of hours a day um, and unable to take really any breaks. And so I was getting to the point where um, I, I just couldn't really function as a human being. And by kind of just sheer luck, I stumbled upon and myopia, I think it was on like a Quora, or Quora like post or something and I found Jake um, and what was happening, you know, what he was saying on in myopia was actually really like, uh, it made a lot of sense to me and somewhere like in the corner of my brain, I was like, I, I think I kind of agree with this and maybe knew this um, on some level. And so now it's been a year later, um, I started basically, I'm now a negative six in my left and a negative five in my right. I'm wearing contacts right now, you can't see. Um, that is but, so. That is so much better. When, yeah. when, you, when you say minus nine, just because having been around this for the last twenty years going on now, like minus nine, it's just a nobody does well with a minus nine. Like what you said about headaches, there's not a single person I've ever talked to who has that many doctors and is fine. Like the no. yeah, it's it's yeah, maybe crazy. You tell it's about. um. Yeah, no, it's not great. It's, um, <laughs> I, I think I've met one other human being in my life that had as high of a prescription as I did. Um, and they were amazingly functional, actually. Um, but they, I've actually since, like, kind of just told them about it and myopia, and they're also, like, super ecstatic. Like, I can't, I can't describe how much of, like, a difference in my mental outlook like on life, um, like, and myopia has made. So thank you for that. Like I was, because my vision was so bad, you know, and my head hurt all the time and life sucked. And it was just um, like, it just seemed like there was very little hope. And I didn't really know um, kind of what to do because all the optometrists and ophthalmologists that I was seeing were just telling me like, this is, these are the, like, this is kind of the hand you were dealt and you got to find a way to cope with it. Um, and so I was on the, you know, I, to the point where, you know, I was so desperate where I was just seeking answers on the internet, but also um, I, I had like in Hong Kong woken up one day and just like was unable to see. I think it was in hindsight, it was probably a combination of like maybe a panic attack and the migraine that I was having. And I was just like, I woke up and it's kind of like when you stand up too quickly and you get a head rush and you kind of lose vision. I had that like permanently for a good, not permanently, but I had it for a good like maybe half day and I had to go to the ER and I was freaking out because as I'm sure a lot of NYU and myopia users also have this kind of like uh, low key fear I had always been very afraid of losing my vision because my vision was always so poor. Um, and so when I got to the ER, they had told me that um, I was experiencing some sort of retinal detachment. Um, and then they sent me to, you know, the ophthalmologist. And Hong Kong, by the way, has like amazing ophthalmologists. Like I think that one of the doctors who like invented LASIK or spearheaded, pioneered LASIK it, uh, practices there, I did see him. He did not recommend that I get LASIK, but he did recommend that I like get um, laser surgery to patch up my retinas. But there was like, 
I, I mean, I could go down like a whole tunnel about this. I'm, I'm not sure if you want me to, but like it's, uh, it was pretty bleak. Like I, I was facing surgery with the possibility of permanently losing my vision with like a, a non-zero chance of losing my vision or like just living with this sort of a thing. Um, and so I took some time off uh, work and everything. And I just came back to Seattle to decompress and like, figure things out. I got a lot of second opinion. Um, and I think I noticed when I came back that if I wasn't staring at a screen all the time, the headache kind of went away. And so um, I was trying to kind of figure out if there was any science behind it. And so, and myopia was really helpful just in pointing me to the right direction of like studies and what works and what doesn't and things like that. So that saved me probably a lot of time. Um, in you know in which if I didn't have it I probably would have just given up because it's those studies can get pretty dry um but yeah it's it's like very exciting now because I know I can get to a point where you know I don't have to function with uh contacts or glasses and things like that so um thank you and I want to help anyone else who you know it might be suffering from the same thing to to be able I, to help themselves I think it's interesting and I like, I, man, I don't know if I like it, but when you said you were desperate enough to go to the internet, um, <laughs> just, just from, it's, it's always weird because I'm in this strange spot. I'm not, I don't want my face on the internet. I'm not into conspiracy theories. I'm not into health stuff. It's really odd for me to be this guy. And then when you say something like I was desperate enough to go to the internet, I'm like nodding my head because I've been there with other things with that yep. feeling of, oh, I guess I'm going to go into the mud and see if there's anything out there. Yeah. And On one hand, it's sad that we're in this space, right? That a person like me who is just like you, like I'm a trader, I'm not an ophthalmologist, yeah. I'm not in the profession that I have to be the one talking about this. On one hand, and on the other hand, what I've noticed a lot of times is that people like you, like if your profession is a very analytical one, this resonates better. And maybe it's because how I relate to things, but a lot of the logical thinking, like you look at it and you're like, okay, the biology is pretty obvious. The science is pretty obvious. The self experimenting is very straightforward. So you can see, right. does, it, does, it te does this theoretically make sense? and then practically can I apply this is a pretty short span of, of exploration. And it, it, yeah. it seems to really work well because I have a lot of trader friends who get into this really easily because in, yeah. their, in their brain, it just makes sense. You go, okay, like th th this is logical and I can try and see if it works. Right, and you see, I mean, thankfully, I think you see results pretty quickly, especially if you're overprescribed and if you're like me, like you, you were definitely overprescribed. Um, and so it, it becomes, I think, very quick to like make progress. And you're like, wow, this, this works. It's just like anything else with your human, like with the human body, you're like, wow, I drink enough water. Like I, you know, don't have headaches all the time or whatever it is. Um, and so, yeah, it's, I've, I've noticed that it, um, not that I tell a lot, a lot of people about it because kind of like you've mentioned in the past it's kind of like that cookie thing where it's like well not mainstream it's definitely not mainstream but like um i've noticed like with my relatives in china like a lot of the habits that in myopia encourages like they kind of naturally or culturally i don't know like already do like taking breaks looking far away making sure like your eyes don't strain themselves even when you're like you know doing up close work all the time they're very good about like it's a very um almost like like established rhythm where they're like okay like I, I know I've been looking at this for you know 15 or 20 minutes like time to go get up and get some water or tea or whatever and come back and so um they you know a lot of them are some sort of nearsighted or you know diopter challenge but they're very it's very always very very low like it's rare in china for someone to have like more than two or three diopters 
So it's like they can do near like close up work without glasses um, and kind of use them to drive or what have you. But it's pretty, it's pretty interesting because like over here in the States, like no one does that. Like, you know, gaming for hours, binging Netflix for hours. I've done all of that <laughs> and I've grown up on all of that. So I'm sure that's not helpful. But um, yeah, so that's like a cultural bit. But I, you know, I think what's helped me the most is just like watching other people. Like obviously watching you helps because just having a human being on the other end being like, yes, you're not crazy and this works and like, I've been there and like, yes, I know you're having all sorts of weird doubts because, you know, I could just be a troll on the internet sort of a thing, but having other human beings like that you do podcasts with um, definitely helps like, just make me feel, oh, okay, like this is, this is a real thing and this works and I'm not crazy. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, we are kind of like, we still have to think that, <laughs> like we still have to justify that. No, and that's, I, I think it's fine. I think it's normal. And I always encourage that when people say they're skeptical, that's the same approach. Like it's, and it's, yeah. and I make a lot of jokes and partially why I make jokes is because you want to be skeptical, right? Like I call myself the eye guru, which is obviously not, there is no such thing <laughs> where you're saying, don't, don't trust a dude on the internet like see whether this is viable because the internet is full of crazy stuff. Like I've had thyroid issues and other issues where I go to forums and I fall down rabbit holes where the recommendations people make, they endorse these like just crazy ideas or that almost seem to make sense because a lot of people endorse them. But if you're not skeptical, you may do something that really could harm yourself. So I was encouraged. Skepticism is good. Yeah healthy yeah. level like this critical thinking yeah you just um, go i don't know about this guy he claims to have a an invisible but very glorious beard right <laughs> maybe once upon a time <laughs> yeah i wish yeah. so you you're around minus five you're wearing contact lenses right now obviously right i am yes so, so what today do you do was a, oh, go do ahead. you do glasses over contacts or how do you do your close-up uh, I do, so today, because I was allowed out of the house today to get groceries, I put on contacts, and it was sunny in Seattle, so, like, I just wanted to fully enjoy the day um, of being outside and in the sun. Um, normally, I do uh, differential glasses for close-up work, and then I switch to, um, I play a lot of sports, so I wear contacts for pretty much all the other activities I do. Um, but I, I'm wearing my contacts much less. Like I used to wear contacts because my lenses were so thick before I used to wear contacts all the time, which was probably not great for my corneas. Um, I'm lucky that they're still okay and stuff, but I try to wear them. I mean, basically to the point where I only need them for activities. Um, I've tried the, the con, the glasses over contacts thing when, when I'm like just reading something, you know, I end up reading on the couch or whatever, something like that. It works pretty well, amazingly. Um, so I have just like reading glasses lying around my house, like a 75 year old man sort of a thing, but it's fine. Like, hey, no, I have, I have reading glasses too. And I'm, I'm yeah, almost, but, you know, the stereotype is yeah. somewhat a bit older. Um, but yeah, it works pretty well. Um, you know, I have like an eye chart in my living room, which always gets com comments from friends that come over. <laughs> but it's like, it's actually, I'm amazed at, you know, like just, I don't bring it to their attention, but they'll see it on the wall. It's kind of like hidden. And they're like, is that, is that like an eye chart? And I'll be like, yeah. And they'll be like, oh, and then it's amazing. They'll be like, where do I stand? I want to test my eyes. And like, it becomes a, like a game. Is but, it? How did you start with reductions? I'm, I'm, I'm curious because you do contact lenses, you do glasses, you yeah. started with differentials. Like how was that early process for you? Especially with high adopters, I'm always curious. In scenarios so, like this, so you do contact lenses for distance, right? And then you bought some glasses yeah. for close up. Yeah, so I think, and it, it's kind of, it's, it was like a year ago, but if I remember correctly, um, I had like old glasses and so um, my like 
because I had gone, gone to so many optometrists and they had prescribed me so many different uh, prescriptions for my headaches and things like that, I think I started out with like, I want to say like a negative 9.5. I could probably go back into my like journal if it, if it matters. Like, and not exactly. I'm, I'm just Plus, more, just because I always get questions from people listening or watching, like how yeah. the approach worked. So the exact yeah. doctors are not so important. It's more of just somebody who is starting out where you're at is probably going to be curious, like how you first started out with the reductions, just for a yeah. little bit of context. Um, just because I was so comfortable in contacts, um, and I think a lot of people in that diopter range are, I knew that I needed to get contacts that were the lower prescription where I, I, I should start out as. So I had ordered them, like, I usually order mine from a, like a UK website just because it's easier, but I ordered them. Um, and then I, while I was waiting for them to come, which took two or three weeks, I used my old glasses which weren't perfect um, for differentials, but they were better than not, like I was still seeing a lot of progress, um, the, even though they weren't the exact diopter probably that I should have been using. And then once the contacts came, your, um, I, then I used basically, my contacts prescription was my normalized, and then I put a plus one um, set of reading glasses over that for all my near, my near work and then I had like a standing desk set up and stuff and so I was like always the right distance away and I saw progress really fast like I, I was at the point where I was like buying contacts probably every three or four weeks I think um which was really awesome um and then I've kind of plateaued probably I've I've been at negative five and negative six now for at least it's it's April, so six weeks, eight weeks, almost eight weeks, actually, yeah. So, yeah. you know, slow down significantly, and part of that is me getting lazy, um, but also just because we, in Seattle, like, we don't get much natural light until, yeah. usually, like, till June. Um, you you do want to, there, there's going to be a point where, like, there's overcorrection and then there's ciliary spasm and then there's improvements you're making so especially with high doctors especially initially you get a lot of improvement which is yeah. fantastic because it gets you into it like the if 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 this worked any differently it would be much harder to become motivated and excited and trust the process so it's nice but what you right. will notice probably at some point is you get to a point where you make a reduction and you start noticing like a little bit of ghosting like a little bit of double vision, like astigmatism, kind of. Right. Not necessarily, but it's quite, it, it happens quite commonly. And that's the time you really, being lazy is perfect. Because if you take it slow naturally, and, not, and this also is what a lot of people do, like you get sidetracked and then you just leave the corrections where they are for a few months. Because right. at some point your eyes and your visual cortex just need time to adopt. So people that push the reductions get this, transient astigmatism symptom that's kind of a pain so basically what i'm saying it's fine to be lazy and it's fine to take it slow at this point because you've you've okay. reduced close to half right and it's much better to just leave it alone for a little while there and let the biology properly adopt adapt and then slowly make reductions from there okay yeah it, it feels fairly um I don't know if comfortable is the right word, but like I don't get headaches with this prescription anymore. Um, I do like, I don't know if you, if other um, users also experience this, but like I, I've always, and this is probably normal, but I've always had more trouble with headaches with glasses than contacts. And like, I don't know if it's like, I've always gotten the highest index lens and things like that. Um, I don't know if it's just kind of like, the way it's gotten better like when i was in a, a higher um, prescription it was i think i could probably look at a screen for maybe 15 or 20 minutes and then i could feel the tension kind of start to build now like if i'm wearing my differentials and just working it takes about like a good 45 to an hour depending on the light and kind of and if i slept enough the day that day or whatever 
um, but it still will inevitably come. It's kind of good now because I, you know, if I feel it, I take a break and I know to take a break and give my eyes a rest. So it's kind of like my body, I use it as like my body's natural kind of uh, reminder to tell me to, to stop. But it's, it's odd because I don't get that with my contacts ever. Like I could, in theory, you know, binge watch all of the Friends seasons when my contacts and my head would not tell me any other. Otherwise. Yeah, and I was I, I was hesitating whether I should explain that or not because basically yeah. what happens is your glasses only the optical center gives you the correction that you want and anytime your eyes wander around you're getting distortion and you're not the doctors change right because the the way the lens is curved so with uh, a contact uh, lens you don't have that vertex issue because the lens is right on your eye the glasses are in front of your eyes so you get a lot. The image is only right in the center, right? And then you get the hyperopic, the focus on the periphery. It's just, you're not getting the correct image basically. And, and at some point it just becomes too much strain that your, your visual cortex just goes, this is no good, I don't like it. And that's what causes the headache. If you wear a contact lens, it doesn't happen nearly as much because you have a correct image basically. But the problem is, yeah, and there's two problems with that. The one is the contact lens doing close-up will dry up your eye because your blink rate is reduced yes. doing close-up. So that becomes a problem. And when you have dry eyes, you can't do active focus properly. Your, your vision is not as good as it should be in the first place. Yep. That's one problem. And then the other problem is because you don't have that strain symptom, you're much more likely, as you said, binge watch and abuse the fact that you can do that. So it's much better to wear differentials after now you don't feel right and you just, mm -hmm you have to take a break. So you're definitely doing that the right way. Oh, good. Okay. Well, that's good that I'm not going crazy. Because I was like, there is an art, I think you have an article that's like, you shouldn't have got, like headaches from your glasses. And at one point, I really like dug in and I was like, I don't know why I'm still having headaches. And then I was like, you know, it's not such a bad thing. I just have yeah. to take a break for like 10 minutes and I'll be fine. But um, yeah. yeah, like... like you're also okay. more sensitive to it coming from a high adopter. A lot of people who would start at a minus five don't have this reaction because they haven't been exposed to this, this artificial focal plane to that extent in the past. So you're, you're more sensitive to it because you've been in a worse place. So it's almost like your, your biology goes, Oof, I don't like this. So somebody who's listening to this or watching this who started at a minus five probably won't have that same level of discomfort that you... You're just going to have still for a couple of doctors as you go down. Once you get to like minus three, minus two, a lot of that will go away because the, the optical quality of the LO doctor lens will be better. Uh, okay. That's what I was thinking is once there's probably a threshold where it's like, all right, now it's more tolerable. But I mean, I'm still really thrilled with the progress that like I've been able to make. And then I'm, I think I'm okay with like, slowing it down um it's already much better as long as i know honestly that it's going in the right direction like it doesn't really matter if it's gonna happen you know in two years three years five years it doesn't really um matter as long as it keeps going and not regressing so mm -hmm. that's what i was gonna ask is have you had cases of people where they do like make a ton of progress and then for whatever reason they do regress like is it do they find that it's like a thing or not really it's really uncommon it's really really yeah. uncommon because it's everything you're doing it's not mysterious magic it's just you're reducing strain and you're creating right. some stimulus and once you've done that for four diopters worth right you you've built so much of a habit that it's very unlikely that you wouldn't just bounce back to a high adopter. If you do, if you do, right, you break your leg and you're in a hospital or you're locked in because of a virus and you start binge watching Netflix with your, with your contact lenses in, you will definitely regress, but you will regress a very predictable rate and you'll go, okay, this is no good. So it's really easy to stop that and go back in the right direction. So right. there has been some cases where some things have happened that have caused some loss of progress but for you to just go back to a minus nine is is highly implausible yeah it's um i saw the ophthal ophthalmologist 
maybe six months ago and he was like he you know how they do the I don't know what the scientific term is now called they they tested my eyes and he was like wow your eyes got a lot better <laughs> and um and he kind of assumed from that it was really interesting he assumed because my vision got better that there would be no no problem with my retinas like I guess it can, you know like it's an inverse thing where it's like well if your vision got a lot worse there's probably something wrong with your retina and then because my vision got a lot better they were like well we, you know they almost skipped the scan but I was like no I just want to know because I came I drove all the way here like just look at him but he was like he was really impressed and then um I kind of like told him I was like using my contacts less and things like that and he was like yeah and, um he was like yeah that sometimes can help like for certain cases and, and patients <laughs> so um he, he kind of bought into like the general concept I think of like active focus but uh it, it was it was interesting yeah because he was just like oh like well your vision got better so your retinas are probably fine yeah so I really resent when they call us patients because I used to get that too. And I'm like, I'm not a patient. Like I'm not sick. Right. It's, not it's, sick. it's putting you in this place where you automatically feel like you're accepting this authority and you're like, Oh, right. I'm, there's something wrong with me. I, I cringe whenever somebody says patients, I, I get upset about it actually, because I'm like, you're not, you're calling people sick that aren't sick. As far as the retina thing's concerned, I would still check retinal thinning. I can't give medical advice because I'm definitely not qualified. Yeah. Um, what does happen is as you're with high diopter, your eyeball is more elongated and the retina is attached to the back of the eyeball and it doesn't curve. Like the eyeball is not supposed to have this big curve in it. And as it elongates, it curves like a football. And then the attachment of the retina becomes stressed. That's why you get retinal detachment because at some point, Right, the, the the attachment is like getting pulled away from the from the eyeball. So the the risk of retinal detachment is significantly higher at, with high myopia because the eyeball is elongated. So theoretically, plausibly, as the axial length should shorten as your myopia reduces, that attachment should become less stressed and your risk may reduce. But I've neither seen studies for this because it's kind of a it's not something that anybody expects to, for eyesight to improve. So there is not that much data on that. And also, right. again, like I can't give you medical advice. If it was me, though, I would have read regular checkups just because you were in that space that wasn't super great for your eyes. And you just want right. to make sure that there's nothing, you know. I would say it's most likely going to be fine, but I would still. It's, yeah. With it's those still, kinds of things, it's better to check, right? Because they'll yeah, catch exactly. something before you have symptoms. Exactly. Yeah. He was, it was fine. Like they were, um, it was just because I don't, I don't know exactly how the scan works, but like in the past, because it's kind of like you're, you're scanning the retina and then not like nothing was attached in my retinas. It was just, there was thinning. Um, and there was, they called it degeneration. It sounds really terrifying actually. Like, um, and so they, they were, you're trying to check on basically the way that he described it to me is like it's a piece of you know your retina if it was a piece of fabric or cloth right like it's threads starting to come um come loose because there's not enough nutrients and blood flow going to the eye because the shape of your eyeball has changed and things like that um but everything's fine i'm happy to report we're i'm still going back and forth you know <laughs> to doing that but it does I think help just in terms of like mental health and like outlook, like it helps a ton just knowing like, Hey, I don't have to be that way and be in pain all the time and just be angsty about my vision. Um, and I don't have to like worry about it and think about it. And so that's just like infiltrated a lot of other parts of my life. Just like, well, you know, I can do things that I probably wouldn't have done before. I can keep playing sports and things like that. Um, so, what kind of sports? What kind of sports are you playing? Um, I play. I actually took up since I moved back to Seattle. I played dodgeball, um, which is like a super fun, obscure like sport. Um, I played a lot of. I, I ran a lot actually as um, 
a kid and then uh, I played a lot of golf. And so then now as an adult, like those are pretty lonely sports. Um, they're pretty solitary. And so as an adult, like dodgeball was a lot more fun and appealing because you're going to like yeah, large groups of people and you're, you always, you're always on a team. Um, you know, you're always playing against another team and there's always like a lot of camaraderie and um, competition, which is fun. Is dodgeball, um, is that what I'm thinking it is? Like we played in yes. school, like two groups of people in a ball and you throw it at the other side? Right? Yep, literally, yep. It's, um, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie, like the, <laughs> it's like a Vince Vaughn. I think the American dodgeball scene actually came like was inspired by that movie like from what i'm told um but yeah it's it's like two teams they have different kinds of balls so some of them are foam and softer and they don't hurt like when you get hit with by them and then they have the red rubber ones that you know like make a noise when you get hit and like leave marks um so i play with both i prefer the foam one just because the risk of injury with them the rubber ones are, are quite high, um, but it's, it's really fun. And the people like the community there, probably much like in myopia, it's, it's it, the community is what makes it so great. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's a kind of an obscure sport, but it's growing and like, I, it's really fun. And I don't think I would be able to play it if I was always wearing glasses, but also at such a high prescription because you need like fast reaction times you need a lot of peripheral vision so it helps me with that because I don't have to practice it or be aware of it like if I don't have very good peripheral vision I just get hit in the face um so you know it's it's good in that sense um but yeah like those sorts of things like you know overall like my quality of life has improved a lot and things like that and I'm, I'm sure you've done that with you know a lot of other people as well um the facebook group i think i joined that like a couple months ago that was awesome too just to see like people posting progress reports i should probably be more active in that um just to like help and stuff but it's just good it's just like it's actually awesome to see so many thousands of people like kind of working towards the same goal or struggling with the same things um, it is it is truly bizarre like it is i feel like i'm in some alternate reality right because yeah. i went through, i went through a milder version of what what you went through and then just the way the whole thing has grown into a thing and the way it continues being ignored by the people that are supposed to help you like putting it all yeah. together sometimes i feel like i'm gonna wake up tomorrow and it's just gonna have been the bizarrest dream ever right like how can somebody who's in like if I'm an ophthalmologist and I hear or watch this story, how can I not go, let me dig into this, right? Like rather than telling people, my patients, that this is their lot in life, like right. what if there's something to this, you know? Like, yeah, it's, I, and yeah. I found, like, I found that the, those who, like the optometrists that I've seen since I've discovered um, in myopia, which is just two, um, they've been really like uh, flexible in the sense that they'll, I, I tell them, I'm like, hey, I get really bad headaches when I work and stuff like that. And I don't really use my glasses besides, you know, like I basically work all day sort of a thing. I don't need it for a whole lot else besides to drive. And they will, they'll, a lot of times they'll say, oh, well, let me take it down a diopter or two for your like near vision basically prescription and then you know when you drive use your full prescription and they'll give me two prescriptions um so i was lucky to find um optometrists that were open to the idea and they're you know i don't know how much of the science and studies they've gone um gone and read and, and analyzed i hope a lot but that you know it, it seems more just like a gut thing like they it, it's it's what they practice now, I guess. Um, and because I think my prescription was so high, they were comfortable doing that. I don't know if they would have been as comfortable if I was like, a, you know, minus three or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. But by the way, also, I have to say like the dodgeball thing is fantastic. I always, <laughs> because the thing is like when, when people come and say, 
exercise the word exercise or how many hours a day yeah. should I do active focus or I'm really addicted to my screen it often doesn't translate I can I can tell that a lot of times people aren't getting what I'm saying is the the dodgeball thing for example using your eyesight because you don't want to get hit by that ball yeah. is a completely different thing than just trying to stare at an eye chart trying to make yourself improve your eyesight like what you're doing right is long-term so much more reassuringly effective because your doctors will continue to, dec to decrease, especially if you're wearing contact lenses that give you good vision, but you still have right. to challenge it for that activity. Because then however much time you spend in that, like there's something that happens in your biology when the vision is required to escape danger or to right. <laughs> compete in an environment where you're gonna use it much more effectively and seriously than if you're sitting back and you're like, I'm, I have to practice this. So I'm just yeah, saying yeah. this, like, this will help you get back to 2020 because you're using it in a way that your body requires it to function. <laughs> yeah, otherwise I, I literally get hit in the face. Um, and so, yeah, no, it's, it's been really a, a happy coincidence, I guess, um, that I found it and it was, like I probably play, I don't know, like four or five nights a week and stuff. And so it's a, a really great like way to just like decompress, like throwing, there is something very therapeutic about throwing a ball, like physically throwing something at another human being when you're stressed out. Um, even though, you know, it's in a safe environment, things like that, but also just like the, the vision part of it. Um, I like it because I don't have to think about it. Like I don't have to, you know, stare at the eye chart and make sure like I can see now, like if I, if I see better, I throw better shots or I can dodge better and things like that. Um, so it helps, I think like, you know, to your point about lifestyle changes and stuff, it, any, anything that takes me away from a screen and TV and my phone is probably a good thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it goes to show like my boyfriend probably spends uh, like 12 hours a day on the screen like and he has like decent habits but his vision like just doesn't get worse it's in, it's insane like I don't know what his DNA is made of but it's like it just doesn't get any worse like for how much like time he spends in front of it and I'm just like well good for you <laughs> Well, I there are definitely. there are genetic markers. Um, there's 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 interesting studies. There are genetic markers for myopia, which people confuse that myopia is genetic, but it's not the myopia. It's the stimulus response causing your eye to elongate is different in different groups of people. And unfortunately, these genetic markers that are associated with your eye tending to elongate easily given the wrong kind of stimulus is more prevalent in certain Asian cultures. So Sounds also not in everybody who's Asian, but there's definitely right. a prevalence. And over the years, I've definitely anecdotally noticed frequently higher myopia incidence rates in certain Asian populations, which unfortunately doesn't work both ways. Like your myopia doesn't imp also improve faster, but it tends to go <laughs> further Right, like there's a lot of people who stop at minus four, minus five, and it just doesn't progress beyond that. But then there's others who will just go to minus 15, and there's no, there's never an equilibrium that seems to happen where you're just like, that's it. So, right, like for somebody like yourself, that intervention is necessary to stop yeah. the progression. Otherwise, you're just headed off the cliff. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's a good point. Is I think maybe some people do plateau at certain at a certain rate like my parents both had glasses and they they are kind of like if you look at my family kind of tree like we probably had the genetic marker right somewhere you know down down the line um but my grandparents like were farmers and they you know spent all day outside farming so they never you know um they never needed glasses or anything like that. And then my parents were, you know, the first generation to be college educated. They spent a lot of time reading books um, and then, you know, computers and things like that. And so they had, I think my dad is like a negative 
six or negative five in his glasses and things like that. My mom got LASIK, but was very similar um, in prescription. And it's interesting because like the ne- like my parent, my sister and I are higher in prescription, probably because we have phones and we're entertained by our screens and things like that now. But it is interesting because you can almost like draw a correlation like, oh, well, the amount of hours you spend inside looking at close-up things probably affects your vision and you know that may not be the case for other um you know other people who don't have the the genetic marker um but uh, i was like thinking about it I'm like yeah we definitely have whatever that like in asian populations the lactose intolerance gene is pretty pretty common and i'm like yeah like this is just one of those things where it, kind of like the optometrist said, yeah, you, you have it and you kind of just have to manage it, but it's much better knowing how to manage it. Like, yeah. I've and it's, it's super it. simple because if you have, if you're wearing differentials for close up, if you're wearing a reduced correction for close up that you don't get hyperopia to focus, your myopia doesn't increase your ciliary spasm is lower, right? Like that's, that's the number one thing. If you don't want increasing myopia, you can't wear distance corrections for close up. And then, yeah. Along with that, if you reduce your distance correction to where you see clearly, but you have some level of blur challenge, and then you add something like dodgeball, your myopia will, <laughs> will slow, gradually reduce. It just will. Like, there's not much more magic to it. People a lot of times love these internet things that, that have all these exercises, and you also need to take these vitamins and all these secret ingredients where... The reality is really that simple. It's like avoid the hyperopic to focus in close up, reduce right. your distance correction to where you have some challenge and then add an activity that makes you use that vision and challenge it on an ongoing basis. That's all it really takes. Like genetic yeah. marker or not, lifestyle that involves a lot of screens or not, you will still get rid of your myopia if you just have those basic ingredients. Yeah, and it's, I think like, it, it's awesome that you built a system where it's like you you can afford to get lazy i guess <laughs> like if i you know if i think about it like it, as an you know as an athlete like if you're trying to train for a marathon or something like the most successful kind of programs right are always the ones that build in like rest and break and cheat days <laughs> like things where you can kind of um take a step back or like you don't have to so you don't have to be focused on this all the time and so like I was really focused on improving my vision and like and myopia and I read every not everything but I read a lot of stuff on your website and a lot of studies and then I I did that for probably two months ish and then I just stopped and it was like kind of became automatic um and so and then your email came and it was like, how are you doing? And I was like, Hey, <laughs> like, yeah, I should, I should like talk about this and, you know, try to give back and things like that. But it's, it's really awesome. Like, um, you know, now I'm at the point where I'm trying to do that delicate dance of like, because I'm so happy with like how much progress, um, my eyes have made. I'm, I'm like, I know people who also have, you know, pretty, pretty severe myopia. And I'm like, how much do I tell them? Like, how do I do this without making the, it sound like I'm crazy? Um, or, you know, like trying to sell you like the spaghetti monster kind of religion thing. Like just, I don't, um, I haven't mastered that yet, but I do like, I do want them to like be aware of it. And I found kind of like you said, people from other cultures or who are aware and have traveled a lot and things like that, like certain things resonate with them um more than others like I have friends and who are Italian who now live in America but they they totally understand like they're like yeah like you know because people in their life have had glasses um just for driving that was their thing they're like yes like I my eyes are not perfect but like I see good enough without glasses and then I just wear glasses for driving So like they become like culturally like driving glasses. And so because they never wear them for anything else besides driving, they don't, I I think, you know, they are less likely to then need them for other things. Um, 
And so they're like, yeah, this makes total sense. Like this is your eyes, like natural response to what, you know, you put in front of it. I was like, well, that was cool. I'm not good at it either. I have to say, sadly. And I, the only thing I've found is that you, it's up to you, right? Like you're going to find this resource, but you're only going to care about this information if you have a need for it. Like, like you were in a situation where if you're physically in pain and you're headed down a bad path, you're willing to do this. If you're a pilot and you need to pass some eyesight qualification, you'll do it. If you're, if you're somehow motivated to improve yourself, you'll do it. Otherwise, putting this information in front of people doesn't make them take action, right? Like it's sad to me because yeah. a lot of times if I, I have friends that have minus two doctors, they were contact lenses. I'm like, you could be rid of this in no time. But they say, right. I spend 30 seconds in the morning to go whoop and I stick those things in my eyes and I'm fine. Right. So it's not worth it to me to go through the trouble. So, you know. Yeah, that's, and that's more of a lifestyle choice, I guess. Um, yeah. I found like friends who have children or are thinking of having children, like they are generally more interested, um, especially my Asian friends, because, you know, I think it's always a concern that you're going to pass on your bad vision to your children. Um, no iPad. So, like, no iPads. Yeah. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. No iPads. Yeah. Yeah. No iPads. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I've had friends like I, I had a friend who was thinking, who didn't, was considering not having children because she had such poor, you know, she was so myopic. Um, and then like I kind of sent her a few studies and I was like, hey, like, take a look and she's she's a um she's a pharmacist so she's like very comfortable reading like uh basically research papers and things like that and so she was like wow this is insane and kind of to your point earlier she's like why is this not like the main way that she's like this is a really well done like study like i don't understand why this didn't make more news like even amongst them like not the medical community, but like the optometrist community. And so, and I don't know, like I genuinely don't know. It's kind of agonizing actually. It's, it's like that. My dad is a, is a doctor and he's really into physical fitness. Like he runs a lot and he plays a lot of sports. Even now, I mean, he's in his seventies. Like he's really wow. a health focused guy and he's a doctor and he's a really, he, People love the guy and they travel from all over to see him and just, right? Like, it seems like this is a guy who has it together. He takes statin drugs for his heart because he has high okay. cholesterol. And I send him the studies, right? Like the detailed breakdown of what statins do to you and why it's probably not a good idea. And he won't look at them. He's just, he's oh. just like, nope. If you don't take statins, you're going to die. The end. And... I don't know what it is, right? I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a psychiatrist, but my inkling is that there's something in we establish a belief in something and then we put that in there as a pillar of our reality and that's how it is. And the more yeah. we repeat that to other people, the more we in physically ingest the thing, whatever the case may be, the more that's just, this is it and I've moved on to other parts of my reality and people don't really wanna take that pillar apart again. It seems, I don't really know, but just because it's my father, I know the guy pretty well. And the fact that he's so into health, but yet he will not even look at this yeah. possibility. I think the similar things happen with people in that industry where they've learned this in school and they've told other people this for the last 20 years of their life. And yeah. they're not ready to go that deep into the rabbit hole of, did I say and do the wrong thing? I don't know. Right. Well, it is uh, like what you said about a pillar of your reality. That is, at least for me, what in my opinion, like it actually changed my reality for the better. But you're right in the sense that, and like you, I'm not, a, I'm not a psychologist or anything, but I think you probably have to be open to having your reality changed <laughs> for this to really work. Um, and yeah, I don't, I think my dad is similar in that way, but he always, he's always like, when I point those out, things out to him, he's like, do as I say, not as I do. And that's, it's just old habits die hard or something. But um, yeah, it's, it is really interesting because it makes me wonder if 
like the next generation of, of people, you know, I think this is awesome that there's a resource out here for the next generation of people who want to, like when they're being prescribed another like half diopter up from what they were before and they just, you know, I remember like being frustrated and being like, why is this, you know, why does it keep getting worse? Like no one has any answers, right? And eventually you give up because there's no, there are no answers sort of and the optometrist tells you that's your lot like at least now there is something where in that moment of frustration you're trying to find answers like there is an alternative answer if you you know go looking um that's awesome like hopefully that makes it starts to make a difference and i think it is yeah i think so too there's still a lot of sarcasm and obscure humor and rants on that website Whenever, whenever somebody says, I spent a couple months reading through it, I always have a moment of guilt. I'm like, wow, I should remember people actually read this. It's not just me writing these things for my own entertainment. <laughs> well, I have to say, I was expecting you to be a lot more sarcastic, like given how much of that dripped through your website. So it's kind of nice that you're not, because I was like, I don't know if we're going to be able to have a conversation if you're that sarcastic. Like. <laughs> Yeah, I but I think it's good, right? Because it encourages people to be skeptical of everything they read. And, and, and I write out of that motivation. It's like when you listen to songs, like songs are usually like there's some strong emotional content in music. And I write out of that, like it comes from that space. Like an optometrist called somebody a patient and then I have to write something and it's sort of therapeutic for myself to go, here's why this is wrong. But that's why there's sarcasm because I have to deal with the anger in some way but then when we're having a conversation it's a different thing because i'm happy that you're having this experience i'm happy that we're having this conversation so i'm not in that same space where you know That's fair. you're not you're not reading into some suppressed anger i'm just happy that that we're doing this and i think it's also important for people and i think the change in tone and i really like having these kinds of conversations just to give you somebody give somebody listening a totally different way to get into that content yeah it's great like the ones um that you've done in the past and i think some people have even like gone on to post progress updates on their own youtube channels and stuff they've been awesome like just because it's like it's different it's a different voice um but also you know obviously a that it works and there is hope for people out there and things like that um so those are great like you know progress updates are always awesome um yeah if there's anything i can do to help like i'm happy to send you those sorts of things um, no actually though maybe we should just kind of keep in touch and then when you're another doctor or two lower we can have a little follow-up and see how your dodgeball career is going <laughs> well it's all put on hold now so it's um everything has been canceled it was just like yeah it it's really sad actually like it was devastating because you know people were building teams and training for it and stuff but um yeah hopefully when we get back out into some sort of normalcy from covid um you know we'll be able to catch up again and hopefully you won't be trapped in bangkok do you live not. in Bangkok? Or no, okay. no, I just, I had to go somewhere when this started and, and I just had, I picked the place that I thought would be most survivable. Ah, that's fair. Okay. <laughs> well, the food is amazing, so. I know, that's part of the reason. Well, awesome. I really appreciate you being on and hopefully we'll, we'll have another one of these when you're at minus three or thereabouts. Yeah, I hope so. That's something to look forward to. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. So that was Ray. I think really important, especially when you're in starting out in that high, high adopted territory to not lose faith and realize that you can make a significant difference. We're talking about one year here and she went from incredibly, well, from really high myopia to adopt a degree that is far more manageable and very likely you can do the same hopefully useful subscribe to either to the youtube channel or to the podcasts in your favorite podcast app for updates i'll make sure that at some point we'll get ray back and have another chat hopefully you enjoyed this one talk to you in the next one meow, 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 meow.